Oh, hello. Look at these adorable. Oh my goodness. What is that? What is that ridiculousness? <laughs> Hi, Miss TK. You're so adorable. Oh. Oh my goodness. That was so loud. So, you know, when the cat is almost the same size as the mama, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to stop. <laughs> Mr. Anders. Mr. Anders thought he was all done with Milk Bar. And so did we. And then he got so much bonus Milk Bar. Did you get bonus Milk Bar? Oh my goodness. Oh, all right. So, oh, look at this. Look at the little TK cozies. Oh, they're so cute. And there's no belly. Show everybody your belly. Show everyone your belly. Oh, so cute. Very good. Hmm? Okay, so it's uh, suitcase time. I'm just going to prepare the supplies. while I do, I will tell you about some of the cool things the Operation Jungle Bombs ladies are doing, um, because it's really exciting, uh, or pre-exciting. Uh, you may have seen me post on Facebook about the that we're trying to collect information on where there are free living cats in Langley. And we're doing that so that we can identify areas with the greatest need and hopefully put together uh, some TNR efforts uh, and try to get some more neuter awareness out there and um, get more cat spayed and neutered. So that's exciting. Um, it's going to take a lot of work and it's hard to get that information. So we're hoping anyone who lives in Langley and Alder Grove uh, or works there or knows of people who might have seen cats free living cats, so homeless cats, stray cats, feral cats, barn cats, you know, whatever, unowned cats basically. Um, anyone who has information about where they are living can text our hotline or uh, send me a Facebook message. And we're starting a a list of locations and information and then we'll be able to get we'll be able to um, put together some programs and possibly it will enable us to apply for some grants and that sort of thing so that we can actually pay for some of the stuff which is great so that's kind of what we're hoping to do And so huge thanks to the Jungle Moms because they are awesome. They're like mobilizing and getting posters out there and um, being generally awesome. So that's super cool. Super cool. Hi there. So now the question is, where are all the toys? Some cats have been playing, <laughs> playing in the toy corner. So very scanty, very scanty. So it's kind of all over the place. Look, Miss TK might like this one. 
That was a good throw. Um, okay. I'm trying to find all of these. Oh, hi, Marvie. Marvie. Oh, Marvie. Do you think Anders can fit in here in the castle? Oh, he might try. Or he might go camping. Here we go. All right, this is what I was looking for. So these things. Um, okay. Ooh, we have lots of toys. I think that's most of it. Oh, I should put this back up. where the Sharpies are. We're still in disarray from the moving and moving things around and switching rooms. Still lots of piles, places. Okay, I think I think this will work. Oh, yeah. Ah, I'm going to sit right here. Oh, it's a Marty. Look at this little Marty. Hi, Miss TK. You're so adorable. Hi.
Hi, Misty. You're so cute. Oh, are you purring? Are you going to make some purrs? Um, I also should thank, again, Sue McNellis and everybody who has donated um, probably more than once by now to the uh, Bobby's Feline Leukemia Fund. Uh, you guys have helped many cats and kittens, including these guys, get tested for feline leukemia. And that is not something that LAPS could afford to do consistently before Bobby's Fund. And so it's something that LAPS has created uh, a new, a whole new policy around and Jane is working on making it official and it is taking some time to get that done because Jane's also in charge of the gala and animal welfare and volunteers and a million other things so uh, things administrative stuff like policies and creating new funds etc are sometimes uh, take quite a while to actually make official but everybody laps is super excited about it and it has already been making a difference Oh, Marmee and Anders are using the litter box together. It's very cute. So thank you, thank you, thank you to Sue and uh, to everybody else who has donated to that. Uh, it's it's an amazing it's an amazing amount of money, and you guys are amazing people, all of you. Yep, and you too, Missy K. Yes, you are. So, um, Chef and TK are not, <laughs> Chef's really adorable right now. She needs a pillow. There's actually a pillow for this bed, um, but I have no idea where it is. Somewhere. Somewhere far, far away in a box. Because it needs more pillowcases. The pillowcases get dirty and then I think the pillow I washed the pillowcase and it shrunk. It's like a tiny pillowcase. It's really adorable. She actually looks pretty comfy over there. Um, so we also are oh so Chef and TK. I'm <laughs> trying to not be so butterfly-like, as Kimsey's called it. Um, oh, anti-chicken fish is getting attacked by two scampy little girls right now. <laughs> oh no. No! Anti-chicken fish is for baby kittens. I've been protecting anti-CF to keep, to keep her safe for future baby generations. Hi, Mr. Flu for Flu. Uh, okay. So, Chef and TK, as I was saying. TK is doing great, as you can see. Uh, her eosinophilic granuloma complex is pretty calm right now. She doesn't have any major swelling or lesions or really anything going on there, which is fantastic. Uh, Dr. Ferguson and Lisa and Royal Cannon all worked together to get them uh, two big bags of food to do a hypoallergenic food trial because that's one of the first, that's one of the easier things to rule out as, or rule in as a cause for the allergies. So they will, when they go to get adopted, we haven't started it yet, obviously, because they're eating the same food as the babies right now. And it would be too, I would have to split them up and it would be too difficult. Um, I, think it's, I think it's better for them to be together. Now, once the little girls go, I can actually start them on a hypo. 
did. We haven't started it yet, obviously, because they're eating the same food as the babies right now. And it would be too, I would have to split them up and it would be too difficult. Um, I, think it's, I think it's better for them to be together. Now, once the little girls go, I can actually start them on a hypo diet. Um, so I've been waiting for that time, but uh, it will be about six weeks, six to 12 weeks of eating only hypoallergenic food and seeing how, how the, uh, how they react. So if they get, if, if it continues the way it has been or if it improves or, you know, just seeing how it goes and then you just try to rule things out one at a time after that. It's kind of a long process, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I don't, TKs don't seem very severe and chefs were uh, much, much less severe than TKs. So I'm hopeful that it's not going to be something that causes them really major issues. Um, Dr. Ferguson said it much more eloquently that, than that. She, she was very optimistic about the results and how well they were doing after their biopsies. So, so that's good. So uh, the only thing is now, as you probably all know, Sheffels uh, was limping on her back foot and then started to get a fever and then also started limping on one of her front legs. And so we are monitoring that situation and waiting on some test results, which we're hoping to get Monday. And we can't do the rabies vaccines until we know what's going on just because, well, it's never a good idea to vaccinate a cat who, which has a fever or is in some way, um, their immune system isn't at 100%. So um, we wanna make sure that she is, does not have a fever and if there's anything else going on beyond something like an infected puncture wound from an overzealous kitten bite or something like that, uh, we want to know what it is and um, then we can vaccinate. So that's unfortunately what has held up the delivery of Chef and TK to their humans. Their human is being very patient and uh, is waiting for them to come home. And I'm really hoping we can make that happen soon. But we will wait for the test results and also wait for her to have a normal temperature for a couple of days to make sure that we're not going to be complicating anything uh, with the rabies vaccine. She may have her, uh, it's normal to have a reaction, well not normal, but it, ha it definitely happens to have a, a vaccine reaction. So we just want to make sure that if they get vaccinated and if there is a reaction, we know it's because of the vaccine and not, you know, there's something else going on, et cetera. So what are you, what are you doing right now, Marby? Marby's got something. Oh, she put it down. So that is the long-winded story about what's going on with those two. Since they have a home waiting, I don't have to send them back to laps, which is good because they are doing quite well here. They're quite happy and I think they would be stressed going back to laps with the noises and the smells and the different people and the busyness and all of that. It, they, would, they would have to adjust, which I think I know that they would in time, but I would rather not uh, put them through that if it's not necessary. So um, I will keep them here as long as I can and hopefully it won't it won't be more than a couple of extra days. So, chef's temperature was high normal yesterday, which is good, uh, 102.6 Fahrenheit, which we usually like it to be under 102.5, and it was 102.9 today. So I gave her some fluids, and 
she did seem a little perkier. But you probably have noticed she's been a little less active than normal. And um, so I'm hoping the tests all come back negative. She's already she was already tested for feline leukemia and came back negative on intake thanks to Bobby's fund and we ran another test at the lab which is a, a different kind of test just to make just to make sure because it's part of the panel that we were running and that also came back negative so that's that's great to rule out there are certain situations where it's possible to have negative tests and then have it be positive at a, at a later date. Um, FIV test was negative, which is also good news. So um, we shall see. Hopefully it's nothing, but we are, are making sure that we do everything responsibly and Basically, as treating her as if she was one of our pets, one of our own cats, um, as opposed to sending her into a home with unanswered questions. So uh, that's the plan there. That's a very long explanation. Um, thank you for CCing, EG. So I will be able to deliver them, I'll be able to, del to deliver them to their new home in Seattle once they get their rabies and their microchips. So, Paul's crossed that we get normal temperatures and good test results. And that Chef just had a klutzy week. You're scampy. So, anywho, on to the suitcase packing. Paprika and Marby get to go home together, which is very exciting to very wonderful people who are super excited and they will have two older brothers who are about five months old and so they will be very excited about that, I'm assuming. They're so teeny tiny. They're still so little, even though today they are 11 weeks old. They're so little. You can see when they're next to Lucy Anders, how big he is. Oh, got it. <laughs> so they're going to have great fun in their new home. And it's so wonderful they get to go home together. These two have been bonded to an unusual degree. There, a lot of time you'll see like kittens, and they're they hang they seem to hang out more with a couple of other kittens. But these two were always together, always the two of them. So I was very excited that they got to go home together. So. Oh, what's happening? Oh, is there a reset? Oh, I don't think so. Maybe. No reset for me. So, all right. Uh, paprika. for paprika. And Marby. So they, I don't think they're going to do a Facebook page, but they did say they would send me updates. So I think one of the things that happened with the kitten roundup was that people started watching 
the live stream that aren't on Facebook, which is good. And so we got several adopters this time around who don't necessarily do Facebook. So hopefully we will indeed get updates. We do have Facebook pages for Anders, Smokey, Starbuck, Moose, and Shep, and Chef and TK, which is good. Um, and I've been promised updates on Hilo and Gaius, although I may have to ask for them which takes me a long time because I'm slow but who and who else so I don't know the people who adopted Coulter they came to laps because they saw an ad on Craigslist about them so I don't know if they know about tiny kittens at all. Um, Athena, we've had several photos posted. She's in a lovely home. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Someone. 13 is a lot. So 13, 13 cats and kittens going home, hopefully. Hopefully soon for these guys. But uh, noon tomorrow is when I will be at Laps. So Let's do some suitcases. So, little mousies. I'm going to do, let's see, we'll do white, the white mouse for Peanut and the brown mouse for Marby. And these are the little fortune cookies that Carol M. made for the Angie Quali litter because they were a food themed litter. This one I left in its package because it was so cute. And then the other the other one I left out so that it would get it would be smelly. So we'll put this one in little peanuts. And here's one of the well well loved and scented fortune cookies put in there. The other one is over there. I'll leave it out till tomorrow. Um, oh, are you coming to see me? Do you know what happens if you walk by during suitcase packing time sometimes? Sometimes, sometimes you get made into a um, Oh, oh no. Oh, look at, look at this guy. Let's see if we can distract him with a toy. What would Megan and Joel say? They're probably watching right now. <laughs> He's too floofy. He's too floofy to be a bee. He's too floofy. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Oh, his ears coming out. Oh, his ears are all coming out. All right, buddy. Good job, buddy. You're free. <laughs> oh, so adorable. <laughs> All right. So back to packing. Um, a little pink eyeball tribble for each of them. We'll do green for Marby and pink for little peanut. Mm. 
might be in the toy box now. He's got those giant paws. He can he can probably pick things up with them. We each get a tentacle ball and these are from Janet B. Little catnip kickers. Very fun from the catnip cafe. And Miss TK is going to get obviously her ribbon wand to go home with her. Oh, obviously we cannot forget the snuggle chicken. It's your snuggle chicken. Remember when she was so tiny, she was the same size as the snuggle chicken? Now she's a big girl, but she still loves her snuggle chicken. So Marby gets uh, her snuggle chicken. <laughs> oh, there's a kitten in there. Oh, Mama Chef is having a dream. She's sleeping. I want to see Anders' fluffy butt try to get in one of these holes. The Marby. Is it the Marby? Oh, Marby. This all started with... I wanted to have something to send home with them that would smell familiar because it's always hard for the humans when the cats, when the kittens have to say goodbye to their moms and their little friends and some of them go to their homes alone and we're always sad for them. So I think it's nice for them to be able to go home with something familiar something that smells like mom and like their siblings and like their where they've lived their whole lives or most of their lives and so I think it's nice for them to be able to do that and so I was sending home I had tiny teeny tiny little suitcases like actual tiny suitcases in fact I think I had I, the first year it was like tiny little Chinese food boxes and then, and then, and then I upgraded to these, which were a little bit bigger, like tiny trunks, but obviously, but then by the last couple of litters, it was, they were way too small because all of you send such lovely things for them. So. Um, the blankets are, are really nice because they can go in the carrier and it's something familiar that they can sleep on and snuggle with and I do think it helps with the transition to make the transition easier and less stressful. So let's see. So thank you to Pat B for sending a whole new supply of amazing blankets, all of which I love. You and these are the perfect size and they're very soft and cozy and they are they go to Mountain View with them and Nick TK looks very beautiful on the pink one. So I'm gonna have to probably save that for her. So I feel as if uh, Marby should get maybe the one chef is laying on right now because it will be nice and smelly and i'll put that one up just also to make sure <laughs> what did you do what did you do little little scamperoo I probably should send this tent home with them too, right? Uh, so they can go, cam they can take their tiny suitcases and go tiny camping in their tiny tent. So I have to send this home with them too. 
And so we'll do two blankets. And I think this one probably has the most smell accumulated on it. So I'll probably do these two or the one that chef's laying on, which will have some good smell on it too. So those, and then the tent will go. And what am I forgetting? Am I forgetting anything, everyone? We should do, where's one of the jingle balls? Hi, hello. Like there's some, what's, do you see this? Oh, get him, now he's gonna, now he's trapped. What's he gonna do? How's he gonna get out now? Oh, look at the tail. <laughs> oh. Oh, get him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the kitchen sink, yes. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> they should have tiny medical re records from Mountain View. Um, alright, so I think I was going to put a... The problem with the toys is that they, the favorite ones always get hidden. But I think we've gotten most, I think I've gotten most, if not all of them. I think I have. Here, sweet. We let chicken go out for a, for a few minutes. All right. I think that will do this. this. Oh, here, this is a big one, too. They like this one, too. We'll see. We'll let them pick. Which one, which one do you want? That one. Oh, definitely that one. Okay. All right. Good job, everybody. Oh, there's a the other one. <laughs> okay. Seems like I was just packing tiny suitcases for the dancers. Time flies. All right. Um. <laughs> oh, that's a fun one. All right. I should definitely include that one. Then I think we'll be good. Here, you guys can play with this one. coordination. It's amazing. Alright, so I'll put this one in Marby's. Well, maybe, I think there may be a little more room in the little peanut suitcase. So there's that. Okay, what else? I don't think I've forgotten anything this time. But you never know. It's been a, it's been a kitten season full of chaos. Hi, little Marby. Oh, Marby, I'm going to miss my little one. Oh, she's looking really good. Really, really. No, still running away. So busy. She's so busy. <laughs> You're so busy. Oh, so cute. <laughs> oh. Oh, you're so ferocious. She just was very ferocious and intimidating just then. So, Anders is being picked up around midnight, I hear. I'm so glad he came over because he's been so fun to have visit. Hasn't he been so much fun? Have you had so much fun playing and attacking? Oh, and getting some milk bar and a little love swatch from Auntie TK. Oh. So everybody's asking what is going to happen next. So I, um, if another pregnant mom comes in, I will take her, but kitten season is winding up, running down, wrapping up right now, so 
It may not happen. Usually around this time of year we get older kittens and it is peak of ringworm season so I know the ISOs at LAPS are full right now and I am not set up to deal with ringworm here. So I will hopefully not be getting any ringworm kittens. <clears throat> So there may be older kittens that come in that stop by for a little bit. We'll have to see. Just depends on what uh, needs arise. And the box of kittens that was left in the road yesterday, they're almost old enough for adoption. They just need to get their spades and neuters and everything so they are already in foster care and will be available soon I would think they're really cute what else we do have several foster homes available right now which is amazing, which is a luxury we have not had before, but thanks to the Kitten Roundup, we got several really wonderful foster homes, which is great because we can accommodate more kittens, but it also means that um, there may be other fosters who get kittens. <laughs> before I do, which is fine. So we'll just see. We'll see what happens. We just have to be flexible. And we'll see. <laughs> Last year at this time, it was actually October 15th that I brought home the jungles and they stayed until January 22nd or so. They were just supposed to be here for a couple weeks. And we all know how that turned out. So you never know what's going to happen this time of year. It's an odd time of year. There have been a couple of lost pregnant cat reports in the last few weeks, but none of them have ended up at laps. And I suspect it's more kittens. Kittens are usually born like the end of September at the latest and then, or mid-September. And then they're like hitting six, seven, eight weeks at this point. So we'll see. We'll see, but these guys will be here for hopefully just a few more days. And then, who knows? <laughs> I know, lost pregnant cats, why are they outside? That is an excellent question. Because this is a notorious area for coyotes and predators and dark country roads. And I don't know why anyone would let their cat outside. But many, many people do. Oh, Andrews, are you so sleepy? <laughs> He's very cute. So, tiny suitcases are officially packed. The girls will be leaving in the morning. We'll probably be leaving around 11.45. We'll try to be on time because I'm usually late. <clears throat> Always running late. So we'll do paperwork and stuff at laps and then and then we'll be down to two. Then we'll have 11, 11 for retail endings and two to go. So that's quite a lot. That's a lot. That's good. 
<clears throat> I think we are up to, where's my list? So this will be Furry Tail ending 76 and 77 for Tiny Kittens HQ. Marby and Paprika. So that's pretty exciting. 76 and 77 cents. That's uh, Tiny Kittens HQ Fosters since I, since I started fostering with Lash. Amazing how many how many cats and kittens there have been? <laughs> Miss TK, have you had your tail attacked one too many times today? <laughs> She's making your face. And Marty was just stalking her. Follow Miss TK. Do you need a break from kittens? You can come with me if you want to. You can come with me. You're going to have a long break from kittens after tomorrow. Seventy six and seventy seven are since uh, my first fosters, which were a pregnant or not, uh, were a mom, a cat, and her six two day old babies rescued during an RCMP drug raid. She was not socialized at all, and she the mom ended up staying at lap. This was before the kitten cam and before Facebook. Um, she ended up staying at LAPS for over a year and they didn't see her for the first, you know, eight months and then suddenly she started, she kind of broke down and started to be, started to trust people a little bit more and now she's in the most amazing home. Sometimes it takes a long time. That, so that was one of, that's one of the reasons I started the cam because it was my fourth, Petunia was the fourth litter with laps and it was, it was too hard to go, to send them back to laps and then they would have, they would just, you just have no control over when they're going home or where they go or if they get to stay together and so it's, it's been nice, it's nice for me to be able to try to get them in homes together and know that there are people who have been watching them and who know their personalities and know what they're getting into. So anyway, so yeah, first, first litter was from the drug bust. Second litter was Pantsaru, Bunny, and Bartlett's litter. So we kept three of the five kittens and that was really, it was really hard to send the other two back because they were lovely kittens. But three is a lot. And then there were the, the fairy kittens were another late summer litter of seven orphan kittens who were super sick and had ringworm, unbeknownst to anyone. And they went home in the end of January and then Petunia came in in March so I was off between I was off I guess a month and a half I was off in between those and then with Petunia the kitten cam started and then I think it's been going almost almost non-stop since then because I've done the like Jazzy and Peanut and Smokey, some of the seniors and Kiara and Iggy, the special needs cats and the seniors in between litters. So I don't think it's really been off for more than a week or two here and there. Which is kind of crazy to think about. Right? So, anywho, there is a brief history of tiny kittens. Okay. So, uh,
Live stream is much better than Ustream. I started on Ustream with Petunia and they do ads every, I don't know if it's every five minutes or so, there's a 30 second ad and you get, you guys have to pay, you can pay like four bucks a month and not have the ads. But with live stream, I can pay for the account and then nobody has to deal with ads and it is way better. There are some things actually that Ustream does better that I missed. They actually broadcast high def at a lower and consume less, far less bandwidth. So it's kind of a bummer that uh, switching to live stream, you consume way more bandwidth. But, and also uh, Ustream had a camera that could be wireless and did, did its own encoding, which was really cool. But the ads were ridiculous. So live stream is way better. Oh, look at little Peanut and her little, her little tummy where her uterus used to be. Yay, no more uterus. <laughs> the tiny suitcases were a gift from some of our friends who watch Tiny Kittens and who are generally nice people. They found, they keep finding them and bringing them. Um, and they're the perfect size. So that's amazing. Peter and Christine, if you're watching, thank you. They're probably watching. They also brought these little mice. Oh, Marty's got a mouse. So, I think that's it. Anyone else have any questions? Yes, the Firefly tiny suitcases were actually tiny. That was, I, was I doing these then? I think the Petunia ones were little like Chinese food boxes and the same people who gave us the tiny suitcases gave us little seed packets because they were a flower themed litter. So everyone got little seed packets. Except Caper got a jar of capers, which was adorable. And then Caper and Marigold's people left me a little gift and it was um, inside was a jar of um, gingers because Ca Caper and Marigold were gingers, ginger twins. So they were lovely people. So anywho, uh, does Dr. Ferguson have any idea what could be wrong with Chef? So there are a couple of different possibilities um, in the viral realm that would cause lameness, like sort of like what she's experiencing. So those are some of the test results we're waiting for to rule that out. Uh, because when she examined her, she didn't find anything obviously wrong. She thought her right elbow was perhaps um, bigger than her left elbow, so potentially, you know, something had happened there. Um, but it wasn't anything that was obvious enough to really say definitively, this is what it is. So, um, the first round of tests, the blood panel came back um, good, nothing, so that was the one that was negative FIV, um, rechecking the feline leukemia, which was also negative, and just checking her various levels and organ health, and all of that came back um, good, and as you would expect for a cat who had recently had kittens, so there were some little things like like certain, like anemia, for example, is very common. And there it was like a time, just like on the low normal side of some of those things. So, which totally makes sense. Um, so nothing concerning there. Um, and so Dr. Ferguson just wants to see what the test results come back. And then based on those, then we will figure out what the most prudent course of action is from there. There's a little Mar a little Marty right here, hiding behind the tent. So, 
So we, <laughs> Anders is asleep sitting up. Oh, he's so sleepy. So unfortunately we just have to wait for those results and then see what we can do. Which is always, it's always hard at this point when they have a home waiting for them. I always hate to have to delay sending them home. It's a little Marby. Look at the little Marby. Oh, the little Marby. Once they have homes assigned, I always just want to get them home as quickly as possible so that they can start settling in and so they have their own laps to play on. <laughs> Chef is really cute right now on his little bed. So I think that's it. If there's any, um, so her temperature is only slightly, slightly above normal. It's kind of like in the high normal, slightly above normal range. Um, so I gave her some subcutaneous fluids. <laughs> Which will help hopefully bring that down just a little bit and just make her more comfortable and hydrated. And usually fluids will perk them up quite a bit because it will make it. When you get dehydrated, you kind of just feel crappy in general. So um, keeping them hydrated helps them feel better. Um, <laughs> Joel Newfeld texted me <laughs> what the bleep is on my cat. <laughs> so he saw the Anders B. <sighs> so I had a water fountain here at Tiny Kittens, uh, but I gave it to Kiara's people because she really likes to drink out of the fountain and she was kind of borderline. She was on the low normal side of kidney function and drinking lots of fluids helped, helps with that and she drank significantly more water with the fountain. But I, I also found that it was hard, it's, it would be hard to keep clean and sanitized to the extent that I would need to keep it clean and sanitized between litters, etc., for these guys. So I think bowls of water, unless there is a unless there's a reason to do a fountain for a particular litter, then I would do one and send the fountain home with those cats. Just because I'm not a hundred percent confident that I could kill, you know, any sort of, we always have to be careful about whatever upper respiratory or fungal or whatever thing might just get in there and anyway, it's just me being, just me being paranoid. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, <laughs> oh, Anders, your, your people are going to come get you soon. They're going to come and get you and never bring you back. No, that's not true. Oh, we're trying to get them to move to Fort Langley so that Anders is just a short walk away. Oh, and that's a comfy place to sleep. fell off again. Little peanut. Oh, I'm gonna miss my little girls. I'm gonna miss my little girls. You guys snuggle with your mama. Hi, Mama Shuffles. Oh, you're so pretty. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. It's your last night with your mommy, so snuggle. Do lots of snuggles. The thing about them going home when they're 11 weeks old is that they've had extra time with their mom so they're a little more independent and ready to go but 
They do still love each other. As you can quite obviously tell, that's pretty cute what's happening right now. Pretty adorable. Where's my camera? Okay. Oh, he's so sleepy. That is a very sleepy cat. <laughs> oh, so cute. All right, so I think suitcases are officially packed. There's an adorable close-up for everyone. Tomorrow, we will say goodbye. To the little girls. Tonight, we will say goodbye again to Anders. <laughs> oh, he's so adorable. Miss TK has retreated to her special closet hiding spot when she gets attacked in her tail too many times. Here's that. Oh, all right. Thank you all for watching. the Roundup Kittens and for donating and for all of the support. You guys are awesome. Huh, I, I did see one woman looking in the window. It's it's like I'm broadcasting a TV, like Times Square at night because this is a huge window on the second floor and lots of people walking by. So it's a little bit, um, what's the word? It's a little bit awkward for me to be in here and people who know me or more likely know the house human and have varying opinions. It's a little awkward to be so exposed, but you know, it's all good. All right, so we will see, we will see what happens next. We will see lots of things up in the air. Oh, look at that Anders, he's trying so hard. He's trying so hard to stay awake. Oh, but he's just so exhausted. He's so exhausted. Oh, oh he's so cute. Oh no, I'm not distracting you with this tent. I was just trying to get a closer picture. Go back to sleep. Oh, Marby. Marby's gonna fall off. Let's put some more polka dots. <laughs> get him, little peanut. If I don't get any new cats, you guys are going to miss <laughs> You're going to miss the train whistle, I know. How will you ever get by without a train whistle at all hours? Alright, I'll see you all a little bit later. <laughs>